Hello and good afternoon LinkedIn and welcome to my HoloLens review. Now I'm going to be breaking up this review into several different components and segments because there's so much information, there's a plethora of different technical information for me to review and to, and to actually identify and troubleshoot and replicate. And one of the first things I've been doing for the last three weeks is attempting to showcase to you what it looks like in the optics from the eye, not the, 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 the post rendering that you see in all these videos uh, that are uploaded to YouTube and all the Microsoft uh, presentations in Barcelona at MWC where you see this third person view where the person's inside the unit, but that's not what it looks like to them. They only have a 52 degree field of view, but I'm going beyond that. I want to showcase to you guys what it looks like inside the headset, and we're going to take the eye tracking out of it altogether, and I'm using this Olympus. Um, Mark III mirrorless camera. Uh, thank you, Carl Gutag. You've been providing so much incredible technical guidance and mastery to try to help me replicate this. So this picture right here is one of the best images that I can showcase to you guys of what it looks like inside the HoloLens 2. Now you can see a lot of color uniformity issues across the butterfly waveguide. This is supposed to be all white. So there's certain areas of the waveguide either where it seemed um, or on the, uh, the calibration of the laser beam scanning system, the yaw, pitch, and roll. Now, Carl Gutag has received a, a, a ton of criticism in the last day and a half because he is assuming, based on his analysis, he captured sequential fields there, and he's calculating that there are two lasers per LED, uh, red, green, and blue, just like the diffractive waveguides here in the right eye and left eye, red, green, and blue, red, green, and blue. He's saying there are two, um, you know, and... and Many other people are saying they're just one, they cracked the can, and I'll showcase some of that stuff to you guys later in further videos. But why is that important? Why is he attempting to troubleshoot this? Because when we look back at Alex Kitman and Microsoft, and a lot of the statements that they have made at 47 pixels per degree, 2.5K radians, um, and, and the scanning rates of the MVIS a mirror, we know that's there. I'll, I'll, I will review all of that in depth in my MVIS review. But as he stated, you know, they're up to 54,000 times per second or 27,000 times per second or 12,000 times per second at 120 hertz refresh rate. What Carl was alluding to is in the 90s, they passed some IEEE standards that, that improved interlacing standards above 60 hertz. Because what they found was people were very sensitive to interlace displays at or around 60 hertz. It gave them headaches, it gave them nausea, it gave them a lot of different problems. So that's what he's trying to showcase to you guys when he's looking at the pixels per degree on those scan lines. And I'm attempting to replicate that. Again, I'm not a master, I'm not Carl Gutag, but he's been providing me a ton of technical guidance and support to try to help me um, troubleshoot this so I can showcase it to you guys in real time. Ultimately, I'm fabricating a 3D printed uh, a setup that is gonna hold the HoloLens with this system in line, and I can record video while it's doing that. Now, Alex Kidman provided some support and feedback on Twitter where he uh, stated that the eye calibration feature alleviates a lot of these problems, and there's nothing like you know trying to replicate the human vision system. He's correct. We're just trying to get as close as possible so we can address these color uniformity issues, so we can address a lot of the problems that people are seeing with the rainbow artifacts. Now, this just this isn't just related to LBS MEMS, it's also related to the in-coupled optic systems and also the butterfly waveguide. When you lose, when you utilize laser, uh, you know, coherent systems, you have speckle, you have a lot of other issues with EPE, the exit pupil expander, and, and when I'm watching a lot of videos from Alex, he references that they, that they got a lot, they got rid of a lot of these issues. Well, they did not. And they can say that there's a certain percentage of units that are higher quality than others, and that's what I firmly believe. I, I believe that there are probably 10% or less that are the best quality, and they're shipping those to the top enterprise clients. They're shipping those to the $500 million U.S. Army contract, you know, on, under the, the $10 billion Department of Defense Cloud Computing contract. And then everybody else is getting variability in waveguide structure. And again, that's related to quality processes on lithography and the SRGs for the, for the diffractive waveguides and basically trying to fine tune all this down into a micrometer. You know, Alex talks a lot about the micrometer precision that went into effect in this. And I have to agree, the laser alignment 
on this particular product is the best I've ever seen on any product on the planet. This is an amazing technological wonder. No, nobody has put together you know, all these different components into one product ever in the, in the history of humankind. And this thing is the most powerful spatial computer on the planet. I'm not arguing that. What I'm arguing is, is that the, the combination of LBS, MEMS, and the current uh, iteration of 2018 devices of MVs, MVs that is in this device is causing some variability or invariability in these types of uh, uniform quality control processes for the, for the device. Now they've offered me a return on this. I haven't done it yet because I've been doing a lot of testing and I've asked them to ship me a replacement unit so I can do some comparisons. But let's, firstly, let's talk about the Azure depth camera. Now Alex essentially said that this is the version four uh, of the Azure camera. Uh, the version three went in the HoloLens one and the Connect V2 I actually have right in front of me. And the improvements are exponential. What you actually see on this side is the Azure V3 uh, DK developer kit. Um, I just had this in 2D for the, for the depth kit out there. But a lot of the improvements they made on versus the version 2. If you look at the version 2, I think it was 10 micrometers by 10 micrometers for the pixel pitch um, for the Connect V2 versus 3.5 times 3.5. What an unbelievable improvement for depth sensing technology. And if you look at, uh, just above me here, this is actually the Azure uh, version 4 out of the HoloLens 2 broken out. And then on, on actually on the upper corner over here, you'll see it just on the front of the device. The reason I wanted to showcase this to you, essentially, is that the, when you're looking at the camera, they're, they're using time of flight technology. So, so essentially it's a class 1 laser, a vertical copy service emitting laser that's sending photons out. And it has a, a transmitter receiver. And, and if it receives more photons back, that object is closer. If it doesn't receive that many photons, then the object is further away. But the reason I want you to take a look at this picture above me, because there's actually two different sensors arrays there. One of them is pointing down. That's a short throw sensor, so you can do very quick hand tracking, and they use a, a, you know, probabilistic artificial intelligent machine learning algorithms to track your hand using you know, uh, neural networks and machine learning. It's incredibly accurate. I, I highly recommend you go watch the hour video by Alex Kipman dissecting the Hollands 2 device. I watched it about 15 times, and it's, it's simply incredible. But uh, again, let's look at some of the other comparisons versus the Connect V2 uh, versus the V3 before I jump into the HoloLens to show you what it actually looks like. And again, let's jump onto the Pixel Array. The Pixel Array is 512 by 424 for the Connect V2, and the, for the Connect V4 or V3, it's 1024 by 1024. That's the active pixels. So they've just improved on this device so much. And on the developer kit, there's a seven, a seven array microphone. On the HoloLens 2, there's a five array microphone, which is just simply incredible. So there's just many more uh, improvements that have gone along with the modulation frequency, you know, up to 320 megahertz versus 130 megahertz on the V2. Just far and above the best depth camera, in my opinion, on the market. Because of all the interactions in the Azure cloud computing segment, you can do a ton of different types of uh, gestures and interactions. You can uh, create 360 degree volumetric point clouds and it's for telepresence and holoportation. Many companies are doing that, um, like Spatial and, and various others. Uh, and, and it's actually very, very low cost. But this is one of the best devices at the highest pixel resolution, and it's very easy to sync the cameras together, both internally or externally, and it's just simply incredible. You know, some of the other parts of this initial review that I'm going to go over uh, outside of the depth camera and the hand tracking is also eye tracking via the infrared uh, cameras that they have on there. Um, I'm also going to look at some of the potentially in future videos again, remote, remote rendering. Um, but let's talk about ergonomics. So ergonomics of the device, if you look at it, they move everything in the back of the HoloLens 2. So the ergonomics, it feels, it's the most comfortable spatial computer I've ever tried. And it's utilizing a Qualcomm 850. There's a lot of other devices out there that are moving over the XR1, um, you know, the V6 M400s, um, and also the Third Eye Gen X2s, which I'll be releasing, um, you know, my next video on very shortly. I've been working on that for a couple weeks as well. But uh, for, for this particular device, um, they're using a lot of cloud rendering. Again, you can pull in 100 million polygons versus 100,000 on the HoloLens. What, what an unbelievable exponential increase uh, on these types of devices. So I'll go through the Mixed Reality Toolkit for eye tracking. I'll go through the hand tracking um, uh, examples on there. And, I'll, and, and I'm going to save the optics 
until I can do some further testing because I don't want to be releasing information that is incorrect. Again, I trust Carl. I trust his 30 years of mastery, but I want to keep digging in. I found a lot of different images and videos of other people that have dissected their HoloLens too. We had this little other gentleman up in Canada who basically confirmed, confirmed that they are using MVIS. Uh, that $10 million licensing contract did go through. So that's very important for us to confirm what subcomponents are being utilized in this so we understand the entire picture of the spatial computing device. Now let's come back to the ergonomics. You can wear this for quite a long time. I'm not going to come back to the eyes, just talking about comfort and ergonomics. So you can, again, you can turn to the side and you can flip this up. And this is a, a, a massive improvement over other devices like the Unreal or the Magic Leap One, where you have a device like this where it doesn't have a lot of eye relief. So people with uh, sunglasses or eyeglasses or prescriptions have to have inserts. <coughs> And that's very expensive when you're out in the field, you're trying to showcase this to customers, or from a manufacturing perspective, when you have 50 different types of people ordering 100,000 units, all with different eyes, right? And again, let's talk, I'll also come back to IPD. So this has a 52 degree field of view, and the vertical pix pixels on the device, I remember on my video that I released last year, we didn't know if the, uh, if the field of view was bigger than that. We had initially assumed it was around 70 degrees, um, with, you know, connecting two M uh, uh, mirrors together, but it's at 52 um, on that system. So they're utilizing these vertical pixels for uh, automatic uh, interpupillary distance calibration. So if you have, you know, 54 millimeter IPD or 67, the system will automatically calibrate and move that out for you. So I hope you really enjoyed this initial review and introduction into the device. You, again, you can look at what it looks like for me on my device through the, through the um, HoloLens 2. And again, this changes on the environment, you know, because this, this has a 500 nit maximum, um, you know, brightness display output. So it, depending on the, the external environmental conditions, uh, your experience can change at per, per unit, you know, and, and depending on, on those environmental factors. So let's jump in to the actual hand tracking and the mixed reality toolkit. Hope you enjoyed this first part so far. Thank you for staying tuned. I really appreciate it. Let's go. Hello and welcome back here. We're going to review the Mixed Reality Toolkit Examples Hub. This is the, uh, an application that is currently on the Microsoft HoloLens store. And what I want to show you here firstly is the Azure Connect. So this is that short throw camera that's facing down um, and instead of the one that's facing outwards. This is the long throw for semantic segmentation and volumetric capture and meshing uh, of your environment. This one is tracking your hands. Again, it's using a, an AIML neural net as well on top of this to accurately track both of your hands. 25 point, point hand tracking, it's unbelievable. It is the best hand tracking on the market. But as you've seen from the Oculus Quest, they're not using a vertical cavity surface emitting laser or time of flight sensor. They're simply using you know, uh, stereo cameras to calculate depth and, and then to track your hands again with a neural net, kind of taking the, the Tesla uh, approach, you know, eliminating the LiDAR, still using radar there, but they're going with the cameras and they, they can still accomplish some really incredible things with hand tracking. Um, and let's go ahead and dive into this. So let's go in firstly, uh, and I want to go into the hand menu examples. So we can just click this first. See how seamless that is? And what, what we want to do here, there's a couple of different types of interactions first in the select the hand type menu options. First, it's going to go show and hide with hand. So if I just put my hand out like this and move it, I should be able to see that button and it comes out like that. It's really cool. And let's change it. And now, essentially, there's four different options that you can have here on these menus. And look how nice this is. Imagine if you were a generator tech uh, you know, or an engineer, electrical, mechanical, you're out in the field and you need to see a menu, a hands up menu. These types of gestures, controls, interacted with these buttons here, they just feel so unbelievable. It's, it's photorealistic, it feels incredible, and I, I, I cannot talk highly enough about it. It's one of the things, like you have to try it to experience it, and it's just beautiful. So let's go back into, um, let's go back into the hub home. And now I want, what I want to go is come over to the eye tracking heat map. So again, on the, oh, let's come back in the eye, eye tracking heat map. Perfect. All right, so when this launches up, we haven't talked a lot about the eye tracking heat map. But what this does, they're using infrared cameras. Um, again, the, the more probabilistic, the system is always on, you know, instead of these burst com computations that, that, is, that is normally utilized. What they're doing is using infrared cameras to create a 3D model of your eye, which is about 99% accurate. So I'm going to look there to the left, 
I'm going to look down there all the way to the bottom left. Can you see that? So this is really important in certain types of, almost all kinds of business activities because you want to know where your customers are looking. Right now, I gave you an example before with Zero Light and Audi, but I mean, this is across the entire market segment. Apple's going to have this integrated most definitely into their AR glass solution. And I, I would highly suspect that almost every other product out there is going to integrate either Tobai, eye tracking like the Pico Neo 2, um, or, or various other spatial computing devices because you're going to know exactly where your customers are looking, especially in social interactions. Again, right, so if you have an avatar, if you're creating a 360 degree volume metric, uh, type uh, avatar where you're now uh, using holoportation to send that over to another spatial computing device, you'll be able to actually see which eyes are blinking and, and, and which ones are interacting um, with the user so they can see it on their side. If somebody looks at you in the eye, you're going to feel that, which is just really a very special thing um, you know, when visualizing the attention uh, of, some, uh, of another user by utilizing these kinds of heat maps. Um, and, and this eye tracking methodology is, is going to vastly improve the immersiveness of spatial computing, utilizing and reviewing all of this gaze data. Again, all of this gaze data is just another point of emphasis. All of these things are data points, hand tracking points, eye tracking points, and in the future you'll have EEG, electroencephalograms, you have bone conduction devices. So all of this stuff will be interact, you know, uh, seamlessly in interacting, you know, at, at sub five millisecond latency, and it's just incredible. I'm, I feel so excited and blessed that I get to test a lot of this technology out there and showcase it to you guys and many of the people that are able to actually test these devices, and especially now that we don't have conventions all over the place. So let's come back into the mixed reality toolkit one more time. And I want—I think I was going to go into uh, the slider examples. All right, we're back in the mixed reality toolkit here, and I wanted to review the slider examples. Now, this is going to demonstrate how to use that pinch slider control with the on sliders updated slider event data. That event data, that new value, you can perform a lot of different actions here. And here's a little one, just kind of moving the length for the gears in and out. It's really, really beautiful. And here's another one that's going to change the colors of this object from green and blue and red. And the reason I like to show, showcase a lot of these UIs as we come back into the Mixed Reality Toolkit is because this is the future of spatial computing, how we interact with a lot of these different types of things. And I think we talked a lot about, and we went into the menus before, let's go to the near menu now. So there's a lot of different kinds of buttons that you can see on the spatial computing devices here. And look how nice this is. Now Im imagine again, industrial applications, health applications, um, and, and surgery uh, and, 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 and different markets around the world, especially emergency response where people need hands-free support. Um, this is an unbelievable integration with the Azure Connect V4. I highly recommend it, you know, coupled with the incredible ergonomics of the device and the hand tracking, which I showcased to you before. Let's go in here real quick with the other hand tracking for navigation. So I think I actually reviewed this before for, for navigation, where you can look at different things like that, and you can actually rotate the, the, hold on one second, there we go. You can actually rotate the earth by just looking at it. You can look at the, 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 this map over here, and, and you can say different things like zoom in. Zoom in. Very good, look at that. And, and, and essentially, it's, it's you're moving around with your eyes. Now this is like an auto scroll feature, Again, right, so as, as I'm panning and zooming with my eyes, it'll keep moving over to the right. Now it's going to move down. It's going to move left. It's going to move back up. And th that's utilizing that 3D captured infrared model that they have there. Like, again, for this one here, you, can, you should be able to say, come to me. Come to me. Very nice. And you can grab it and you can manipulate it with one or two different hands. It's unbelievable. So this is the, the, the culmination of my first volume of the HoloLens. Just a very quick review of a lot of these different things from ergonomics, uh, the color uniformity of the LBS MEMS diffractive waveguide systems, uh, and the coupled in optics uh, for the butterfly waveguide, but also hand interactions, the Azure Connect V4, um, and, and different types of eye tracking algorithms. I hope you enjoyed this first volume. I'll come back with the optics uh, later and probably about another week. Thank you so much for tuning in. Have a great day.